So what an honor to have been invited to write this forward. When Celeste first asked me, I said, I, I think you've got the wrong person because I'm not sure I believe in any of this stuff. Even though I make my living writing and speaking about the mystics and the path of interspirituality, when it comes down to like signing on the dotted line of a belief system, I can't do it. And she said, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to read my forward. It's just a couple of pages. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to read a paragraph from my contribution, which is the way this started. Was, I was one of the contributors. Our relationship to spirit, if we are lucky, is ever-changing. Our prayer life reflects this fluidity. Sometimes our hearts spill over with gratitude, and a spontaneous thank you billows from the cup of our souls. Or perhaps our hearts are shattered by loss. And in our free fall, we cry out for the compassionate arms of an all-loving divine being. At these times, the existence of a creator seems obvious. And we are certain that the big plan makes sense and that our only job is to say yes. At other times, the notion of a personified deity seems childish, even delusional and we fire God and replace him with an amorphous yet sacred suchness. We consider this formless holiness to be unnameable, but we can't help naming it a little bit. Ultimate reality, maybe, or Buddha nature, the interconnected web of being, or the great mystery. I used to think I had to pick one and stick with it. I needed either to believe in a God I could love and long for, confide in and argue with, or else transcend all such dualistic concepts and forge a direct relationship with my source, with which I am already and forever one, in spite of appearances. In Christian mystical terms, this is the distinction between cataphatic and apophatic theology. The cataphatic approach is to define and personalize God by naming all his positive attributes, which leads to a state of worship and adoration of the divine as holy other. The apophatic way is to acknowledge that any attempt to speak of the divine is a limitation because God is an undifferentiated unity which defies all description and surpasses all understanding. Well, guess what? We don't have to choose. We can be true believers and agnostics at the same time, equally dedicated to contemplative practice and devotional rituals, in love with science and in awe of the unseen. We can reach out to a loving God in desperation and in thanksgiving, and we can also rest in the boundless, take refuge in the formless, melt back into our true self. There is no contradiction here. Rather, it is a reflection of the paradoxical nature of the spiritual life. We are both separate from and in union with our beloved. We yearn to return, and we have never been apart. At the heart of all the world's religious traditions and spiritual paths, we find affirmation of this singular truth. Celeste Jacoboni is a luminous exemplar of the tribe of interspiritual beings that is quietly coalescing all over the planet. For Celeste, there is no meaningful dis difference between Catholic and Quaker, Sikh and Sioux, neurobiologist and Hasidic Jew. Celeste is endowed with the gift of an interspiritual heart and equally charged with the task of conveying our essential oneness to a world ravaged by religious strife. Celeste is a healer, and by compiling the, these diverse responses to the simple question, how do you pray, she brings healing to us all. The diversity of voices Celeste has gathered in these pages reflect the dynamic reality of the many ways we are called home to the one. Some of the writers are unapologetically religious and have a juicy personal relationship with God. Some relate to the divine as the mysterious holiness that pervades and connects all that is, but would prefer not to personify it. 
Others deny the existence of what could be called God, yet their inner lives are a source of sanctuary from which they draw sustenance to be of better service. All seem to affirm that the natural outflow of prayer is compassionate action, and that to cultivate a solitary connection with the divine is to participate in a collective spirituality that uplifts the whole world. Here's my prayer, that you, like me, find guidance, inspiration, and fresh new ways of connecting to spirit amid the array of prayers and accounts collected here. May you, like me, discover that some days you are a theist and some days a pantheist, and that there is nothing wrong with this. Sometimes your God is father, sometimes mother, sometimes lover. Maybe you encounter the Holy One in pure emptiness and speak to the Holy One without words. How you pray might change as the chapters of your life unfold, tragedy by tragedy, blessing by blessing, moment by moment. Underneath the shifting story is this other thing, this great secret, this deep stillness, this ecstatic song, in the face of which all we can do is fall to our knees in wonderment and bewilderment and praise and fall silent.